Hell of a game. We'll dive into Save it after a yes, quick word from FanDuel. You can tackle all of the NFL and NBA action on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 150 in bonus bets if that first $5 bet wins. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to join today. Speaking of those Cavs, they had lost two in a row to the Atlanta Hawks. They were down double digits entering the fourth quarter against the Boston Celtics last night. And then Donovan Mitchell did what Donovan Mitchell is paid to do. 20 points in the fourth quarter, didn't miss a shot. An incredible superhuman-esque performance from Spida. Jason, you were there. Boy, I know you guys were watching on TV along with G and J. Just an incredible performance from an incredible player when the Cavs needed it at their very most. Yeah, I, I, that's uh, that's what it made me think of LeBron James. Like that's what LeBron James used to do. He used mm -hmm. to say, we're down by 12. Just give me the ball. I don't care where I am. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to make it. I'm going to play defense. I'm going to penetrate when I need to. And the only blemish on that game was the fact that they shot 17 free throws in the final 34 seconds and it took almost 30 minutes that was that otherwise but ruined. it was really smart what's it was, that it was smart oh listen that's how you got to play it. I know. this is boring I, I thought both teams did exactly what they needed to do yeah. exactly what they even I, let me tell you if if the lane violation wasn't called that He's game might turn out yeah. differently. He yeah. had the ball. Yeah. Well, and that and last, it was really close. I'm surprised they didn't give us more and better looks at that. That last foul, too, by the Cavs was risky because if he would have gone up with it immediately, yes. it could have been an and if one or If he would have got shots. up in the air, yeah. then it would have been. But still, but I like the strategy. They never gave them a chance, really, to No, they to didn't. Get but that I, shot. I mean, other than that, like that, to me, that's a blemish on the game because – I can't sit 30 minutes to watch 34 seconds of basketball. <laughs> I, I, I don't have that kind of patience for anything. Um, but all that being said, my God, those guys, one after another, stood up there and drained one massive free throw after the on both sides. But to Donovan Mitchell, that's what we always say, he's not tier one. That's what tier one guys can do. Mm-hmm. And so, obviously, he needs to do that more. We need to see more of that. But that's who he's become. He's become a late fourth quarter wrecking ball. And that's how you break into that tier one level of superstars. That was a massive win. I know we're going to talk about that next. But Donovan Mitchell was at his absolute best when they absolutely needed it. And it was fun to watch. The thing I like about where he is right now is when he first got here, and we've talked about this on the show at length, and I mentioned it to him again last night, when he first got here, it was always just give it to Donovan and get out of the way. And it just felt like that was the entire plan. And I just, I didn't, I hated that. I it hated that work. it was, and we talked about it. And he said, I have to win every game I play and I'm going to do everything in my power to win every game that I play. That's just the way that it is. And then he sort of evolved from that. And, into, and we talked about it at the end of last year. And he said he sort of came around and he needs, he realized he needs Darius in those moments. He needs Darius with the ball in his hands to get some of those shots at times. It feels to me like this team is now at that sweet spot where Donovan doesn't have to do it, but he's there when they need him. Yeah. And it feels like it's the right spot to be in. And last night, and I asked him last night, when did it feel to you like it was, it was time to go? And he said it was the end of the third quarter. Mike, did he say it was the JT shot? JT, I'm, I'm sorry, not, yeah, JT. Yeah, Tatum. Ta after Tatum made a tough one. After Tatum made a tough one and he kind of got it going a little bit and Donovan felt like, all right, I got to go. It's time to go. Yeah. And then in the fourth quarter, he goes 6-6. Six scores 20 points and just takes over the game and that's what closers do and it, but it felt like it was within the moment of the game and it wasn't just give it to Donovan and get out of his way which right. is the way that it was in the past and it just feels like they're in a sweet spot now of they have this closer he can win you a game he can go get you a game when he's feeling it when it's rolling but there's also other options that it doesn't have to be that guy every night. That was a big win. And I'm the one who yeah. poo-poos a lot of November and December and say, guys, it's only November. It's only December. We're not going to be talking about this in April. This was a big win because they lost two to Atlanta. Boston plays similar to Atlanta. Mike and I were talking about this. Atlanta's good. Like, they're good. They're a tough match for they're us. They're long and athletic. Yeah. And so's Boston. They were without Jalen last night. But you had to win that game. Because if you want home court, you can't go down 0-2 in the series. Right. 
and then expect to still have a shot at that one seed. Had they lost last night, they fall out of first place in the East after that incredible start that they have. That was a big win. It, it was an important four win. Four losses in six games. Yeah, obviously. To, yeah. two to Boston. It was an important win. To Atlanta, I agree. Man, you know what? I will tell you what. Um, you know, this was a huge win. Uh, when I got on Twitter and I was talking about it, uh, about this level of win, people looked at me like, "Come on, G. Bush, here you go again, being emotional." And I said, "Look, man, go tell your 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 you know first grader or the kid that you dropped off at school for the first time. Hey, you know what?" When you're 35, you won't remember this, right? Go tell your eighth grader, yeah. Hey, you know what? I know you, you, you got your first boyfriend, but you won't remember this in 35 yeah. years. Oh, your yes, heart won't always yeah, feel yeah, like this. Yeah, you won't always feel like this. Hey, we in the moment right now. We trying to we, we trying to figure this thing out. The Cavs are trying to develop some championship uh, type habits. They need to figure out where they need to be aggressive, just like Jason uh, so eloquently pointed out. It's about your, your, your speeds, the tempos, and where do you step in as Donovan Mitchell to say, okay. This is one of those games where I need to be aggressive and my team don't got it. So let me go ahead and put the Superman cape on. He had five points at halftime. He comes back out and this game is a 12, 13 point game it, 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 late in the third quarter, early fourth quarter. And he sensed what he needed to do. He came, he comes back in the game and he gets it going. Uh, every time that they came down, Pritchard, by the way, this dude is turning into my, the, one of my hated, most hated yeah, players. Me too. This guy, his this scrappiness and, and shot making ability of this guy against the Cavs is turning into like something that does not need to happen. We'll get into that later. And smack talk. Yeah, too. just just being out. The way he trying to bully, just turning around. Who lets you get your money off of the paint like that? I don't like him, but I love to have him on my team if he was there. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but Donovan Mitchell, boy, look, when you talk about your superstars and Donovan Mitchell is, 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 is right there. I'll be wanting to call him a superstar sometimes like right there. Like, ah, uh, let me put you in that category, but you keep doing this against the Celtics and doing it when it, when it matters, they're going to put you in that situation. And I've said it before. If Donovan Mitchell <coughs> can consistently win games like this and the Cavs have the best record, he can be in contention for the MVP. Spider Mitchell, if you ever wanted to get on that level, if you ever wanted to be right there, you got an opportunity this year because you got the record, you got the team, y'all play the right way, people like you guys, and on top of it, you got a team that can compete with the Celtics, man. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Spider Mitchell, that was as exciting a, a basketball game as I remember watching where, where it's shot for shot coming back from behind. Boy, I, I love that. After three quarters, it felt like this, okay, this was a continued trend of how they've been playing. Mm -hmm. They got off to actually a good start last night for a minute, and then it was terrible for three quarters, and it felt like, okay, well, they played like crap against Atlanta. They didn't play particularly well against Boston the first time, and here Boston is without some key players, and you still can't get it done. So I think we were all feeling frustrated heading into that fourth quarter. Jason made the point that, you know, in the past when it's been just give Donovan Mitchell the ball and get out of the way, it's not really good for the team, and I agree. And I think the difference now is he doesn't have to do it. They wanted him to do it in that situation, right? They needed, they, they, they needed him there because other guys weren't having a great day. Evan Mobley had one of his worst shooting days that he's had all season. Uh, and Garland was fine. I mean, he, he was shooting fine, but Jared Allen didn't take a lot of shots. Nobody else was really stepping up in the moment, and so they needed him there, and you could tell the other guys wanted to get him the ball. It wasn't that they were all standing around doing nothing. There was good ball movement, and it just the ball kept finding Mitchell because he was hot. They've done that with other guys in other games. You know, there was that game, I can't remember who was against the other, a couple weeks ago, where Ty Jerome, they just kept feeding him the ball because he was hot, and that was it. And, and so it doesn't feel like – it feels like Donovan Mitchell is having these moments within the system and within the offense. Yeah. And his relationship with the coach, you saw that one thing there, just when he had his arm around the coach. I feel like something simple like that is meaningful. I, maybe I'm being silly, but I don't know. I just like that he had his arm around the coach. It shows you, like a level of respect. Oh, it's, good, it's good body language. Are yeah. you getting emotional here, Bull? That wasn't a even emotional. a stat. That was not an analytic stat. Yeah. Like, Are like, you for is, is this a is this a people move? I, I think this is a people. I don't know what it is. I but you know, holiday. I mean, LeBron put his arm around Black. <laughs> <laughs> and then he put, and then he, and then he moved it up to his neck. Yeah, well, and then he choked and him out. He choked him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, but there yeah. is, there is a, a deep level. There's a respect. relationship. There is right? a deep level yeah, of respect I mean, between those I, uh, guys. So I, I thought that the, the touch pass from Okoro 
to on the dunk. The, the, I think it made it 115. It was to Mobley at the very end. Right. It was a quick down yeah. in the blocks, touch pass, and a coral. It was so it wasn't like he went LeBron v Pistons, where he yeah. just literally told everybody go take a nap. Right. I've got the next 25 points. There was still involvement from other guys. Right. Now he, the crossover at the top of the key, sidestep three, like he did most of it himself. But Jason, I love what you said about how early in his time here he felt like. I've got to do it every night. It's just like Jose Ramirez, who feels like every night he's got to carry the load. At some point, there is a straw that breaks that camel's back. It's exhausting to do that every night. The way you can become a tier one superstar, because he was last night. He's not, in, he's not living in that mm-hmm. category, but he's knocking on the door. He might be kicking the door down. Mm-hmm. But when you do that against the defending world champions and you erase a 12-point lead in the time span that he did it and the way he did it, it makes you think like, well, he's able to do that when they need him to because he's got the energy to do it. You can't do it every night. Right, sure. It's exhausting. I'll tell you what, Jay, uh, as as, as impressive as as this has been, there was something that I never thought I would see. We'll talk about it later on the show. But uh, it didn't have nothing to do with no offense. But Darius Garland oh, playing yeah. defense, boy. Yeah. Where, where did you get? Where yeah, you get real, to that? He real had to stop on tape. And I just, I, I, I had okay. to rub my eyes. Okay. We're gonna get to that next. Oof. I wanted to say one thing on Donovan and Jason. Yeah. Pick it up, but being there last night, Kenny talked about it. Donovan talked about it afterwards. In about the middle of the third quarter, when they went down by I think it was fourteen points. Kind of felt the energy being sapped out of it. It felt like yeah. all the good vibes. Was it 14? I thought the biggest deficit was 12. I, I could be wrong. Third, whatever it was. I thought it, got it was to 12. Point. Either way. You could feel, and it almost felt in the moment being there, like all the good karma they had built up over that 17-1 and start yeah. was just slowly dripping out. I and felt it was that about too. to start taking on, on water. And Donovan said afterwards, and Jason asked him the question, like, when did you know you have to take over? And he said after Tatum made that shot. From that moment on when Donovan kind of snapped into it to the end of the game, that was a playoff-like atmosphere inside Rocket Mortgage Field yeah, last night. You, like I don't know if you could feel it on TV. I'm telling you, it being did. there, it, came through. It, was, it was electric. And I only say that because in these matchups against Boston, and granted there was no white, no brown yesterday. They had Porzingis back. That changed it. it I want to see these two teams healthy. But getting two games against Boston, one in Boston, one in Cleveland, now that both kind of came down to the wire like this, yeah. in that intensive of an atmosphere is only going to benefit this team down the stretch because you can't replicate and manufacture those kind of environments, those kind of pressure situations, especially if they're running away in the Eastern Conference and they're playing all these games in March where they're fighting for the one seed, but most of the games have no impact on playoff seed, and they're going to be locked into a top two seed. Yeah. I thought that was a big factor last night, and the fact Donovan came through with 20 points, six of six from the field. They made all their free throws down that the was, stretch. That was huge, Mike. And just, just an incredible, resilient performance from a team that, despite being 17-3, and three, I thought desperately needed a win last night. I agree. It, it was desperation. It felt, I, it felt like it watching it. One other thing on the, on the Donovan conversation, <laughs> he's not going to win the MVP because – He's actually, if you look at his numbers, he's averaging the fewest points, his lowest rebounds, and his fewest assists since he got to Cleveland. And yet this is the best team that he's on. Well, the, well that's, that to me is telling. He's right. playing the fewest minutes. He's scoring less. He's, all of his numbers, are like all of the traditional numbers, are down. And this team is far and away the best Well, the team definition that's. of MVP is most valuable player. Yeah, he's not going to win it. Sometime, and he, sometime, he won't win it. I agree with you. He won't, depending less, on what happens. Sometimes less is more. He's made the team better. He's become more valuable to the team. And that's sort of the point I was trying to make in the beginning was he doesn't have to do it every night. No. But it's there when you need it. And last night they needed him, and he was there for them. But if you look at his numbers, and it's a, it's a good thing that he, I know that he felt like he was playing too many minutes the last couple of years. His minutes are down. Some of the production is down. But some of the other guys now. Do we know from an efficiency standpoint, the numbers are the numbers down because the minutes are down? Well, that's part of it. You just on the so, floor. So I mean, I'm gonna, I'm willing to overlook that. He's if shooting if the his three. Efficiency, he's shooting like forty percent from three. I just looked at. It, I don't remember now, but I think he's right around forty percent. It's his career best in three point percentage. Yeah, that's definitely up. It's his lowest field goal by, by I mean, by three percent. It's not like it's a giant right. drop off. Right. Um, despite the fact he's taking the fewest <laughs> shots. I mean, yeah. I would tell you what, man. Look, 
I, we talk about stats, and we in basketball, we love to say people got empty stats. We love that. We be like, ah, sure. You're playing on a bad team, jacking up a bad, a lot of bad shots, and you like, okay, well, you know, you're not going to be in, in in terms of of running for first team All NBA or or MVP. But for me, you want to look at it and say, okay, they got a new coach, they got a new system. He signed here in Cleveland. He's gotten and, and believed in Evan Mobley and Darius Garland and some of those other guys. He's obviously the leader. And when you can put points like that on the board in the main crunch time against the Celtics, um, that, that puts you in a different different space. Cause and, I and most, yeah, and most importantly, G, sorry to cut you off, but, but because he doesn't have to do it all the time, He's more likely to get it done when they do need him to because yeah. he's not going to is he, – because he's playing less minutes. In in theory, he should be fresher as the season goes and be able to step up even more in those big spots, especially in the playoffs, mm-hmm. when they need him because he's not being worn out during the regular season. It's like leverage pitches in baseball. Right. You know, what is the formula for that? Is that worth 1.3 pitches for every leverage pitch? that you make in a game because you're exerting more effort. Right. And, you know, I think work smarter, not harder. I think that's exactly what we're seeing out of Donovan Mitchell this year. And I know he likely will not win the MVP award, but it's moments like that. You know, they always call it the Heisman moment. What's your Heisman Heisman moment? Mm -hmm. Last night was an MVP moment. That was a moment. Absolutely. And, you know, there's there's a lot of competition for that award. Denver's Uh, coming out. I think the league's ready to give it to someone else. I think it will go to someone else this year. Which is, again, stupid. Again, that's right. how they do it. Jokic is having the best it. season of his career. But but don't you feel yeah. like there's yeah, all this, but no way they're going to vote for it again. But, but guess what? We got the Nuggets on the schedule coming up. Right. Come and on over you, uh, here. If you want to see the Cavs take on the Nuggets, even though they're, I believe they're home first and then they're in Denver the second time. They have two more Thursday. home games this week. Denver is here Thursday, Wednesday. aren't they? Yeah. Thursday. Is it Thursday? It's Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Week. Did you guys see that crazy play? He didn't score, but... They, there was an inbound pass at the buzzer, and Jokic, from his, from his baseline, didn't even catch the pass. It just hit his hand, and he went like this, and he he's threw incredible. it the entire length of the court. It yeah, didn't go in, wow. but incredible. it was like there was only point. It was essentially had to be a, had tip. To be a tip. And they and tell you, the yeah, length you of the can't court. catch and shoot. Right. you got to tap it. It was incredible. It reached the other basket. It didn't score, but – 